Item number 14 is to consider ratifying the property tax revenue increase reflected in the 2013-2014 budget. Ms. Duke. Thank you, Mayor. <coughs> Excuse me. The local government code states that adoption of a budget that will require raising more revenues from property taxes than in the previous year requires a vote of the governing body to ratify the property tax increase reflected in that budget. The proposed tax rate for fiscal year 2013-2014 is remaining unchanged from the prior year at 47 cents per hundred dollar valuation, but will bring in more revenues if a property in increased in actual value. <coughs> The city of Euless has held the tax rate at 47 cents per hundred dollar valuation since fiscal year 2008. It has either lowered or held the same, held the tax rate steady since 1995. I ask that council consider ratifying the property tax revenue increase as proposed in the city manager's 2014 budget. Thank you, Ms. Jill. Council, what is your pleasure? Where are you? I need to make a motion. Item number 14. I don't have a motion or a second. Approve, I'll move approval. Mayor, I second. Thank you. The motion is made by um, Councilperson Bynum and seconded by Councilperson Alica to ratify the property tax revenue increase reflected in the 2013-2014 budget. Is there further discussion, Council? Not cash your votes. The tax revenue increase reflected in the 2013-2014 budget has been approved. Item number 15 is to hold a public hearing for the proposed tax rate. Ms. Jill. Thank you. <coughs> Mayor and Council, since you have just heard the presentation on the budget, you are aware that a large portion of the general fund operating budget is supported by property taxes. The city's total operating revenues proposed for 2014 is $33,901,762. As you can see, property taxes represent one of the largest revenue sources at 30% of the overall budget. In fiscal year 2000, taxable values were approximately $1.4 billion dollars since then, ULIS has experienced steady increase in assessed values until 2010 and 2011, when we lost a little more than 8% of our value. For fiscal year 2014, our assessed values are $2.85 billion, which is an increase of over 33%. This is the highest level seen by the city. Over the same time period, ULIS tax rate has declined from a high of 61.6 cents in 1995 to 51.5 cents in 2000, and has been held at 47 cents per every year since fiscal year 2008 and again proposed to remain flat at 47 cents per hundred dollar valuation for next year. If approved as proposed, this would be the 19th year that the tax rate has either been reduced or held the same for the city. The tax rate that you adopt will be levied in two components. The first is interest in sinking, which is required to be levied at a rate sufficient to pay outstanding debt. This INS rate has decreased just slightly to 10.94 cents. The debt component has reduced from a high of 16.36 cents in 2005 to this 10.94 cents in 2014. This reduction is due in part to the council's philosophy of using cash from excess reserves for as many capital projects as possible. State law requires that we levy a tax sufficient to pay the required debt of outstanding bonds and the remainder of the tax rate is to be used to fund the city's general operating expenses. If you adopt the current rate, the maintenance and operating portion of the rate will increase slightly to 36.06 cents per hundred dollar valuation. ULIS has seen an average home value rise in the last few years due to construction of several new housing additions with substantially higher selling prices. The average home value in ULIS is currently $145,388, which is an increase from the prior year. For comparison purposes, we have used the current year average home value of the $145,000 and created a chart to show that the hypothetical tax bill would have been each year in each of the years shown. As you can see in 2000, the average homeowner would have paid $599 in city property taxes. At the proposed rate of $0.47, cents, the average homeowner 
would pay $547 for fiscal year 2014, or that's less than $46 per month. This comparison shows that the average homeowner has paid either the same or less taxes to the city in each of the years shown, and will pay exactly the same taxes in 2014 that he or she paid in 2013 if the value of their home remained unchanged. ULIS does grant a 20% homestead exemption, which is applied to the home value to calculate the taxes due. Based on the proposed rate of 47 cents per $100 valuation, the home average will, the average home will pay $546.66 annually. The average home value for properties occupied by senior citizens in the city is $128,167. And after applying the 20% homestead exemption and the $35,000 senior citizen exemption, the taxes owed on the average value of a senior citizen home will be $317.41 annually. This amount may be further reduced due to the fact that ULIS has passed a freeze on senior citizens' taxes. This means that when an individual reaches age 65, taxes will be frozen and the citizen will never pay more than the frozen amount. Some of you may have noticed in the newspaper or on our website indicating that we are increasing taxes. This can be very confusing and somewhat misleading. As shown, as shown in this screen, the city has held the tax rate flat since 2008 and is proposing to hold it flat for 2014, as you can see in column A. If your home value has remained unchanged, you will pay exactly the same taxes in 2014 as you have for the last six years. However, state law requires each city to do an effective tax rate calculation each year that is based on total taxable values throughout the city and not for an individual property. This calculation provides, produces a tax rate that is theoretically generates the same revenue as the year before. If a city adopts the effective tax rate each year, they do not have to publish any notice or declare that they are increasing taxes. However, if the city adopts a tax rate that generates even one more dollar in revenue than the preceding year, the city must publish a notice indicating that it is raising rates. In column B, you will see that the actual effective rate for the last seven years, since the effective rate is predicated on the previous year's revenues, we have also included column C that recalculates the effective rate, assuming that, a council, that the council adopted this rate each year. If you look at the chart in column B, you can see that in 2010 and 2011, when the city lost over 8% in taxable value that we discussed earlier, the city's effective rate was significantly higher than the rate actually adopted by council. During this time, the city felt it was important to hold the tax rate stable as not to impose an additional tax burden on our citizens, even though it resulted in a significant decline in tax revenues for the city. To offset this reduction in tax revenue, the city chose to cut the budget drastically and reduce personnel by nearly 10%. By doing so, as values recovered and the city recouped the revenue lost, we are now required to publish these notices that taxes are being increased. As you can see under column C, had we chosen to adopt the effective tax rate and the tax rate for 2014 would be a half cent higher than we are proposing at this time. The last line of this chart shows that the city's methodology of holding a stable tax rate has resulted in less tax owed than the effective tax rate would have required under both columns B and C. Long story short, the proposed tax rate is not changing and if adopted, if your home value remains unchanged, you will pay exactly what you paid in the prior year. ULIS is of course, <coughs> excuse me, just one of the taxing entities included in your overall tax bill. The proposed tax rate for all entities for 2014 is $2.49.89 per $100 valuation for those citizens located in the HEB ISD and approximately $2.43.15 for those located in the Grapevine Colleyville ISD. As you can see, the school district represents the largest portion of the total tax bill at 55% of the total. The city comprises 19% the county 11%, the hospital district 9%, and community college 6%. Based on the average home value of $145,388, each household will pay approximately $45.55 per month for 24-hour police, fire, and emergency medical service protection, public streets and street lighting, library services, park amenities and recreational facilities, animal control, environmental health services, 
building inspections and permits, and code enforcement services. In closing, we recommend that the tax rate remain unchanged at $0.47 cents per $100 valuation. The next public hearing on the proposed tax rate is scheduled for next Tuesday, September 3rd at 7 p.m. in the Ezekiel City Council Chambers. Thank you, Ms. Jewell. Do we have any proponents for this particular tax rate of $0.47 cents per $100? Any proponents? Any opponents? If not, I close the public hearing and we'll go forward with an announcement that the vote on the tax rate will take place on Tuesday, September the 10th, 2013 at 7 p.m. in the City Council Chambers at 201 North Hector Street, Uvis, Texas. That's when we vote on the tax rate. We don't vote on it tonight, we voted it on September the 10th. Item number 17, moving right along, is to consider the first and final reading of ordinance number 2003. Ms. Jewell, would you come forward again? Thank you, Mayor. Mayor and Council, the ordinance before you includes adjustments to the current water and wastewater rate structure sufficient to cover the overall cost of the operating system. The city of Euless is one of five cities that received water from Trinity River Authority, TRA, and one of approximately 21 cities that has wastewater treated by TRA. Before we discuss the recommended rates, I want to spend just a few minutes describing how TRA works. They basically operate like a co-op. They estimate their expenses for the upcoming year and divide by the expected sales volume of the member cities to calculate an estimated cost per thousand gallons. Actual expenses and actual flows will vary each year. So at the end of the fiscal year, TRA recalculates the actual cost per, per thousand gallons and either refunds or bills each city accordingly. Since this is done in arrears, the city cannot go back and change the rate it has already charged to its customers. In the simplest terms, there is a fixed amount of overhead that TRA must cover in addition to their variable cost that fluctuates with the consumption. As you might expect during periods of heavy rainfall, the city takes, takes less water than projected, so the fixed cost must be spread over smaller volume, which causes the price per thousand gallons to increase. On the other hand, when the weather conditions are extremely hot and dry, consumption generally increases and the rate per thousand gallons will decrease from the amount projected. Based on the fluctuation costs, a few years back, the council established the rate stabilization fund as a means to, by which to help level out these cost differences, the peaks and the valleys that we've talked about. This slide compares the wholesale rates budgeted by TRA compared to the actual wholesale rates charged by TRA for the last 10 years. The blue bar represents the budgeted wholesale rate and the yellow bar shows the actual wholesale rate paid to the city, paid by the city, excuse me. 